the ego box. Let me try to make it. What's up everyone, Manbone Metalhead here. Welcome to the ego box. This little 16 pound thing will throw out a crap ton of light and fog when you stand on it. Not really fog automatically, but I'll get to that later. This is a great thing to have for stage shows. As soon as you step on this, the crowd just draws their attention right to you. It is fantastic, which is why it's called the Ego Box. I first tried on an Ego Box about three years ago, and the one that I used used those big halogen work lights that they work really well. They throw out a lot of light, but they're really heavy and they're really hot, which is not something you really want on stage. That box probably weighed close to 50 pounds and it was just a pain in the butt to move around, took up a lot of space. So me and a friend ended up designing this one that is two by two foot and only three and a half inches thick. Now, normally you might want something a little thicker, uh, but for us, when we play live, we actually put our subwoofers out in front of us and I just put this right on top of the subwoofer. So it really works out well for me to be able to cut down that extra weight and um, space of having to lug it around. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make the box and the lights. Uh, and in a separate video, I'll show you how to add fog to it if you so desire. So I'm not gonna go ahead and make one from scratch, but I'm gonna take this apart, show you guys everything that we use to put it together. And hopefully you guys will be able to build your own after this. Now, before I really get into explaining uh, how to build this, uh, just be aware that you probably need a little bit of construction knowledge, a little bit of woodworking knowledge, and uh, some electrical knowledge to do this. So if you're not comfortable with that stuff, don't do it, or try to find a friend or someone that can help you. I'll put together a list below uh, with links to some of the things, but a lot of the stuff you're going to be able to get at a, a hardware store like Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards. So just use whichever one you have um, close to you. They should have all the materials uh, that you really need to build the box, minus the electronics. So to make the box, I use three quarter inch plywood for all the sides and uh, one half inch plywood for the bottom. Now you might notice two giant holes in the side here. That's for the fog. We'll get to that in the next video. The center support here, I made out of a piece of scrap basswood, but really you could just use like a two by four, cut it down and you should be fine. Now, not only does it support the plexiglass panels, but it also holds the mounts for the switches, which are used to switch on the lights. You can also see I have counter bores all along this support, and those are for holding uh, the springs, which will push the plexiglass back up. Now, the springs that I use will fit right in there nicely, and then if you push them all the way down, they will compress completely. So when you're doing this, whatever springs that you find, uh, just make sure that you make a hole accordingly. Now when I was making this, I wasn't sure how many springs I would actually need. It turns out I only need the one in the center, so that's the only one I use. And finally, on the bottom of this center support, you'll actually see a channel that I cut out so I can run wires underneath of it to get to the power supply. Now you will notice I painted the outside of this black and the inside silver. My thought was kind of uh, the silver would help reflect that light upwards, but with the lights taped to the bottom side of the plexiglass, I don't really think it helps all that much. So you can see I already have some of the electronics installed in here. I didn't want to take them all out um, when I was showing this to you guys. Maybe the power supply back here, and aside from the lights, this is probably the most important part in the electronics. And it's just a 12 volt uh, power supply, so it takes 120 volts in and outputs 12 volts. On the side here, I have an IEC connector uh, that you can use to basically plug a normal power cable in. Um, it also has a switch to turn the box on and off and a fuse um, integrated into it just for protection. It doesn't use a whole lot of power, maybe about a half an amp, uh, but I have a two and a half amp fuse in there. Maybe a little too high, but uh, this supply can take quite a bit more, so I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, the switches are mounted in here on these little brackets that I just glued onto the center support. Um, this is where it's gonna take maybe some trial and error. The switches, uh, you wanna make sure that when they're not pressed, they sit a little bit above the plane of where the plexiglass is going to sit. And when you press it down, you want that switch to be maybe at the same level or maybe just a touch higher than that plane. So when you step on it and it hits that switch, you actually engage the switch. So for wiring, I have three wires coming in from the IEC connector, and that's going to the power supply, so that's three these three wires over here on this side. I have the two ground wires connected. One ground wire is going to one switch, and the other ground wire is going to the other switch. I don't really need to use both grounds, 
because uh, if I step on one panel, both panels light up. So I just jumped the ground between these two switches. I could also have sent them to the same ground connector here. The power is actually not connected at all. I'm going to uh, connect the panels directly to that power. So I have a lead coming off in panels and I'll show you that when I get there. Uh, but on either end of my switches here, I actually have a quick connect um, to connect my panels to. Now because uh, the panel is connected directly to the switch, I didn't want to have to mess with uh, undoing the switch and, and getting that cable out. So I just made these little quick connectors. Didn't really have to do it for the power supply because that's just screw terminals. That's pretty easy to get to. All right, so let's uh, go over to the panels. So here's one of the panels. Uh, basically, I just have four LED strips here that are taped on with packing tape. You can see that they are wired in series. So we have a jumper here. It's gonna run through here, jumper here, run through here, jumper there. So that's how they're wired up. And then we have our leads in here that uh, have our quick connect and then have the wire that's going to uh, connect to the positive side of the power supply. Now on the top of the power supply, you're gonna see that we have some strips of uh, skateboard grip tape. Uh, figured that would be the best thing to use for not sliding all around on these panels and it seems to work really well. You're also gonna see a lot of holes in here. Um, the holes are used for the fog. So obviously you don't need to worry about those if you're not gonna do fog. So let's go ahead and assemble this box. So like I said, we already have a lot of the wiring all set up in here. Um, so we just have to mount the panels. Now since my power supply is on the left side, I'm gonna mount my right side first since I need to have access to that power supply for both panels. So I like to set the panel upside down first and make my electrical connections. So my ground, pretty simple. That's a nice quick connect. And then I'm gonna run this wire under my little channel there. Make sure it's close enough. And then screw it into my 12 volt power supply. It doesn't matter which terminal you use. So I'm just gonna use the right one. So electrical's all set up. Um, I can go ahead and test it, make sure everything's working. So I'll plug my connector in flip it on and then hit that switch. It's always nice to have it upside down so that you're not blind by the light. It looks like I'm having all my LEDs light up. I can test the other switch and they both will light that panel up. So good to go there. So I'm gonna switch it off and then hold the switch until the lights dim out just so I don't have any residual power in that power supply. I flip this over and I'll already have my holes all pre-drilled in here can do that yourself as well. Now, like I said, all three of these in the center, I use counter bores for, so I do have to use longer screws uh, just because I don't have that material there on these two ends, even though if I did it again, I wouldn't counter bore those, I just use short screws. So in these holes over here, I'm gonna use short screws. And then I will use longer screws on the ends here, but I will be using a special screw for this one. Um, and what I did to this is just nor a normal long drywall screw. These are all drywall screws. But what I did is I ground the threads off on the end of this near the head because um, as this panel sliding up and down, I don't want to get it caught on those threads and get it stuck in a down position and keep the light on. Now this is a good lesson. I totally forgot that I needed to install my spring. Um, so we're going to go ahead and lift this end up. We'll put the spring right in there. You want to try to keep that kind of lined up with that hole. We should be all right there. So we'll use my special screw. I'll start these ones and then I'll just use a driver to drive them in instead of using a screwdriver. You can see I didn't drive this uh, screw in the center down. I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to do that. I'm gonna use that to uh, set the height of the plexiglass. So when I step on it, it lights up. When I step off, it turns off. So for mine, it's worked out pretty well for me. As I turn this down, you can see there's a little bit gap there in between the head and uh, the plexiglass. So if I turn the power supply on, it's not on. And if I mark a look at this, step on it, I'll let go it turns off. I don't need to go too far down with that screw, just enough, enough so it's sitting flush 
with this plexiglass panel in its normal state. So with that said again, works perfectly. Turn that off, discharge, and now we just do the left panel. So make our two electrical connections, and of course, do a quick test. I uh, didn't mention this before when I flipped over the first one, but obviously put your spring in first, and then watch out for your wires here on the ends. Um, they can kind of get, sometimes get caught uh, between the plexiglass and uh, the plywood, so just be careful with that. All right, everything is back together. Turn it on. And it works. So there you have it, an Eco Box. So hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, uh, please give me a like down there below. And if you wanna hear more about what I'm working on, like when I add fog to this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel, hit that little bell icon, so you're notified whenever I have a new video come out. But hey, until next time, rock on.